friends, and welcome into Gamecock Central Radio. It's Emerson Phillips joined by staff writer Colin Taylor for a look at the Georgia series coming up this weekend. Colin, before we take a full look at the Georgia Bulldogs, I wanted to talk about the Citadel game on Tuesday night. I know it's old news at this point, Colin, but you know, frustrating loss for the Gamecocks at home, uh, particularly when Madison Stokes hit that triple in the eighth inning with nobody out, and the Gamecocks were not able to bring him in from third. And then in the next half inning in the top of the ninth, the Citadel hit a solo home run to right field to win the game 4-3. to three. Yeah, and, you know, they really just had a hard time adjusting to the, the slower pitching um, that the Citadel had compared to what Florida was throwing this past weekend. Um, and they, they couldn't get that clutch hit, you know. L.T. Tolbert said it, you know, this week that, you know, if you had told him that there'd be a runner on third with no outs, you had him and the rest of that order coming up, that, you know, the chance of them getting, getting a run in would be pretty high, but you know, sometimes baseball works in a weird way, and they just weren't able to execute, get a ball in the air. And then obviously they had that run around in the ninth and couldn't get them across either. So it was just they, they were visibly frustrated after the game. And you know, I think they've tried to flush it and are going to come out pretty angry and ready to kind of make a statement this weekend. So the Gamecocks head to Georgia for three games starting Friday night. And the big news going into this series, Callan, first road series of the uh, SEC schedule for the Gamecocks. And the big news going into this series is that uh, Adam Hill – will miss his Friday start, and freshman John Gilreath will get the Friday night nod for the Gamecocks. Yeah, and the way that, you know, Mark Kingston described it was that, you know, Adam just kind of needed a week off to kind of rest his arm a little bit and get right. And, you know, it's I think that if it was going to be anything serious, they would have bumped Cody Morris and Rich Chapman up a day in their uh, preparation. Um, but other than that, and then, you know, with so I think Adam will be back by Tennessee. That I think that's the plan. And um, then with Gilry, that's a guy that's been able to get out for him all year, and the staff's really, really high on him. So um, this is kind of his second big test uh, of the season when you know he came in and started that Clemson game and gave up six earned in 3.2 innings. So uh, you know this will be kind of a, his his second chance at seeing what he can do in the starting rotation. So what you're saying, Colin, is if if you felt like it was going to be a long term injury for Adam Hill, the Gamecocks would have gone ahead and moved Morris to the Friday night uh, starter in anticipation that Hill might be out for several weeks, but because they haven't, you think it's only a short-term deal for Adam Hill? Right. I think that's the plan for right now, um, is that they're thinking it's just maybe a one-week thing. Um, see, Mark Kingston even, didn't even say that he was really injured. He just said Adam was getting the week off. Um, so I think that they're hoping that he'll be back for that Tennessee series if his uh, you know, ten to nine just kind of heals up, and you know he recuper- recuperates the way I think they hope he recuperates. Gamecock Central Radio, Emerson Phillips with staff writer Colin Taylor taking a look at the South Carolina Georgia series starting Friday night. That'll be in Athens, and we have a seven o'clock first pitch in Athens for Game One on Friday. And again, John Gilreath, the freshman left-hander for the Gamecocks, gets the start. Four point five eight the ERA for Gilreath. Uh, Colin, he made one start earlier this year against Clemson, gave up six runs in that game, but that's a Clemson team, his top 15 in the country. So what do we expect from Gilreath getting his first Friday night start? You know, I think that he'll come out, you know, and pitch better. Uh, Georgia's offense isn't nearly what Clemson's offense is. Uh, They're good, but they're not as as good as what that team can do. Um, And I think that he he loves to pitch to contact. He has a really, really good changeup and a curveball he can work in pretty effectively. And uh, it's a matter of making sure that his fastball kind of stays in that 90 to 91 range uh, in terms of uh, velocity. And, you know, if he could do that, which is something he didn't do against Clemson, I think that he'll be able to get out uh, pretty efficiently and pretty quickly for South Carolina uh, tonight. Georgia will counter with their senior right-hander, Chase Atkins, who is 2-0 with a 3.12 ERA. Carolina 13-8 and going in. To this series with a one and two SEC record, and Georgia's fifteen and six. They're two and one in the league. More on Georgia in just a moment. Saturday starters: Cody Morris for the Gamecocks, junior right-hander, four and one with a three point nine one ERA. And then for Georgia Saturday, it's Emerson Hancock, a freshman right-hander, two and one with a four point oh three ERA. And Sunday starters: Ridge Chapman for the Gamecocks, junior righty, one and two with a three point five seven. And Ryan Webb, freshman left-hander for Georgia, 0-1 with a 3.79 ERA. So, Colin, Georgia's going to start two freshmen, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Yeah, and, you know, with, with Georgia, it's a lot of, you know, they have the experience, or they don't have the experience, but, you know, some of these guys are talented. So it's just a matter of South Carolina, you know, with, with their veteran guys being able to um, kind of jump on them early and rattle maybe a freshman team, you know, some freshman pitchers because, um 
you know, you got guys like Elsie Tolbert, Jonah Bryce, uh, Jacob Olsen, who have been kind of through everything. So it'll be up to them to, you know, really rock a freshman um, who who's talented but just hasn't been in, you know, facing SEC pitching for a really long time. Colin, we talked earlier this week here on GCR about Georgia. They played a five-game road trip in Charleston. They went to the Low Country and got swept by the College of Charleston. They lost a game to Charleston Southern. And in the fifth game in the Low Country, they beat uh, the Citadel. But then they came back and took two out of three at Alabama to open SEC play. So, you know, rough start to the month for the Bulldogs, losing four out of five in Charleston. But they got off to a good start in SEC play, taking two out of three at Alabama. Yeah, and, you know, Georgia's always a team that plays South Carolina tough, especially in Athens. Uh, so, you know, their ballpark's a little funky. They got a shorter shorter porch and um, right field, so a lot of home runs out that way. Uh, but they're always a team that South Carolina, for some reason, struggles with. Um, Georgia's usually got a few position players that can hit. Uh, and I think this series will actually be a pretty fun one just because Georgia's playing so well. And South Carolina is kind of shuffling their rotation and hitters are kind of still getting their feet under them. So um, I think this will be a really, really fun one just because both both offenses are good. And um, the pitching, you, you get some pretty good pitching matchups as well. 7 o'clock first pitch Friday night at Foley Field in Athens. 2 o'clock start Saturday, 1 o'clock on Sunday. All three games will be streamed on the SEC Network Plus. Matt Stewart and Jason Jacobs on the call. And obviously all the games can be heard on the Gamecock IMG Radio Network with Derek Scott and Tommy Moody. So, uh, Colin, the Gamecocks dropped 2 or 3 from Florida against Florida last weekend in the SEC opening series. So, you know, the Gamecocks can't afford to fall too far under 500 here to start the conference play. So an important series with Georgia. And if the Gamecocks could get it, you know, maybe they take two out of three, they get back to 500 in the league, that'd be a good weekend. Yeah, and I think that, you know, you look at the schedule coming up with, you know, you got two road trips uh, on the horizon with two top ten teams in Kentucky and Arkansas. Uh, and you got Georgia and Tennessee coming up right now and then those two road trips. You know, these next two series are kind of must-wins just because you do have such a gauntlet coming up that I think they really need to come out and take two or three this weekend and next weekend against teams they should uh, should beat. And I think South Carolina, you know, for lack of a better word, is kind of pissed off right now just because they have lost so many close games. Both lost. Their last two losses have been by one run. Um, and I think they're going to come out and try to, you know, put up runs at a premium uh, and – kind of like I said earlier, make a statement yeah. uh, this weekend. Yeah, you look at the season stats, and the Gamecocks have dominated their opponents this year, but it just is not showing up in the win-loss columns right now with mm-hmm. a 13-8 and eight record. They've lost some close games, and a lot of their wins have been lopsided. So, an interesting start to the year for South Carolina. Colin, Mark Kingston was talking to the media earlier this week, and he talked about going on the road for the first time. You know, He said they played that one game in Clemson, and they had the neutral site game in Greenville, also with the Tigers, but they have not had a full weekend on the road. So this will be the first road trip of the uh, season. And he said that teams tend to grow closer uh, by taking road trips. They spend time on the bus, they eat all their meals together, and the team tends to grow closer on the road. Yeah, and that's that's a big thing, especially with you're breaking in so many new pitchers and uh, you got some position guys that are new, uh, especially Noah Campbell and a few others, uh, that this – this gets them kind of in the right mindset. They get to see what it's like. Um, and, you know, winning on the road in the SEC is tough, but, you know, getting closer as a team kind of helps with that. Um, it lets you trust your pitching and your defense a little bit more, I think, on the field. Um, I think it does nothing but help, especially with you have a close-knit team, uh, like everyone says the South Carolina team is. Colin, do you feel like uh, with Gilreath starting on Friday night, you know, the Gamecocks go into that one with nothing to lose. They're kind of playing with house money here. If Gilreath can give them a solid start and the Gamecocks get a win, you know, maybe that's one they weren't counting on. Yeah, and, you know, when you look at it, Cody Morris has been really, really good um, in recent starts. And Rich Chapman, he, he had that one mental mistake against uh, Florida. But other than that, pitched a really, really good game. Yeah. Four innings, gave up three earned. Um, so I think that if, you know, the, the thought process is, well, if they could do that against Florida, they should have similar results against Georgia. And I think that, you know, they're kind of banking on those two wins, hopefully, from those two guys. And then if Gilry can come out and do what he's done out of the bullpen this year, then that sets up pretty, really, pretty nicely for a sweep uh, this weekend. 
or at All least right. take it two out of three. 7 o'clock Friday, 2 o'clock Saturday, 1 o'clock Sunday at Foley Field in Athens for the Gamecocks and the Bulldogs. Next week, the Gamecocks have got a Tuesday night game with Davidson. That's at home. And then three at home with the Tennessee Volunteers. So we'll come back next week here on Gamecock Central Radio to talk more Gamecock baseball. Colin Taylor, thanks very much. Thank you for having me on. That's Colin Taylor, our staff writer. You can read his reports on all the games this weekend in Athens on Gamecock Central. And I'm your host, Emerson Phillips. Thanks for being with us. (laughs) 